All right, so we've been talking about Joshua and how he has been leading the Hebrews throughout the promised land. God has equipped Joshua with the um, task of leading the people into the promised land, but also removing all the other nations out of the land. So we talked about how they've defeated the city of Jericho. After that, they defeated the city of Ai. The Gibeonites, it did not work that way because the Gibeonites actually tricked the Hebrews into signing a peace treaty with them. So the Hebrews ended up having to leave the Gibeonites in the land, but instead the Gibeonites became servants to them, but they still were able to live in the land. And in yesterday's lesson, we discussed the five kings that had gotten together thinking that they would be a super army. And they were like, there's no way the Hebrews will defeat us. So we're five armies put together. And so when Joshua hears about the five armies coming together, initially he was afraid because he's like, Lord, that's five armies coming together. But the Lord assured Joshua that they would have the victory and that they would defeat the, um, the five kings. They are already defeated, the Lord actually told him. He says they are already defeated. <clears throat> so, sorry. So Joshua and his army, they, um, they prepared to go. Remember the Gibeonites had told them that the five armies were actually planning a surprise attack. But instead, whenever Joshua gets word of this, he decides to go and surprise them. So they march all through the night and they surprise the five armies. And whenever Joshua and his army arrive, they get to battle. So this was five armies. So this was not an easy battle, right? It was definitely a challenge because they were fighting five different armies. So that was a lot more people than they were used to fighting at one time. But that doesn't mean that the Lord can't still give them the victory. It doesn't matter how many it is. God can still give them the victory. So Joshua saw they were fighting all day and nighttime was coming. And Joshua did not want to go into the battle into the night. He wanted his soldiers to get some rest because they had been up almost a whole day. So Joshua prays and he asked the Lord to make the sun and moon stand still so that they could have more daytime, more time to to defeat this army and so i told you it's kind of sort of like he asked god to pause time sort of right where you know we know that when the sun comes out you know it goes across because it's it's um setting right and then we know the moon comes out when the sun sets but joshua asked the lord to just pause everything where it was so that they would have more time and the lord does exactly that not only does god make the sun and moon stand still for joshua but then he sends a hailstorm which destroyed a lot a lot of the army the five armies that were put together so the lord not only you know gave his people the victory he fought for them as well <clears throat> by using, I told you, like nature kind of, right? He used a lot of the elements, you know, in the earth to help defeat this army. And so, you know, the Hebrews could not take any type of credit for this, right? It's all the Lord who did it. And so Joshua, so the five kings, remember when they saw that their armies were losing, they tried to escape to a cave, but Joshua got word of it. He told them to roll a stone in front of the cave where he would, you know, they would be locked in there kind of like a prison, but whenever after the battle was over, Joshua went to get them and all the five kings were executed. So those five kings probably didn't think it would have went that way, right? They thought we're five kings, we're five armies. There's no way the Hebrews will defeat us. But the Hebrews did through the power of the Lord, they did defeat those five armies. And so I told you, remember all the other nations heard about the God of the Hebrews and how he kept giving his people victory after victory. So all the other nations, they knew and they heard about the, um, the Hebrews and all that they had done. So let's go ahead and pick up into our lesson today. So the conquering, the conquering of Canaan, the promised land is almost complete, but there still was a large piece of the land that wasn't yet conquered. So yeah, they defeated a lot of different cities, a lot of different kings and armies they've defeated, but there's still a lot more. Remember the promised land is huge, right? It's a big piece of land. The Lord blesses people with, you know, um, beautiful land, a large piece of land as well. So the, remember, God had told his people, though, he wanted them to remove everybody out of the land, right? Not just certain people, certain nations. God wanted everyone out of the land. So as they are still going through the battle, the Lord speaks to Joshua and he told Joshua, he said, Joshua, you are growing too old too old to go out to battle. And there is still a lot of land that needs to be conquered. He says, what I would like you to do, Joshua, because you're getting too old to keep going to battle like this time after time, 
right? He says, Joshua, what I want you to do is divide the land amongst the 12 tribes, okay? Remember we talked about the 12 tribes of Israel, tribe of Dan, tribe of Benjamin, tribe of Manasseh, tribe of Ephraim, remember? We did talk about it. I told you with Moses, he was a Levite, tribe of Judah, okay? So there's 12 tribes. So the Lord tells Joshua that he needs to divide the land according to the tribe. So he would give each tribe a piece of land, okay? That would be their own, that they would have to go and fight for their piece of land. So whoever, whatever nation was living in their land, whatever people were living in their land, they had to remove them on their own because the Lord told Joshua, you're getting old, Joshua. You can't keep on a battle fighting and fighting and fighting and you're getting old. It's time for the people to go out and do what they have to do on their own. So the Lord says, get the people together and give them their own possession of land. Give them their own piece of land that they are responsible for removing whatever nation out of the land. And so Joshua did exactly that. He called all the tribes together. He made them get together in their groups, each of the tribes, and they cast lots. So um, they cast lots. And so each land, each land, each tribe got their own piece of land wherever they had to go. So they all got their own section of land. And Joshua told them that they were responsible for still obeying the Lord and still removing the other nations from their piece of land. Now, you might that's how big the land was, that 12 different tribes could each get their own section of land. So that's how big it was, okay? And so, of course, the bigger tribes got the bigger pieces of land, and then the tri smaller tribes got a small piece of land, but it was enough for their tribe, okay? So God gave each one. Some of them had like a mountain area. Some of them had a fertile valley area. They all had different areas inside of the land that the Lord had given them, okay? So when the tribes had got together to do that, Judah was the first to be assigned their piece of land, the tribe of Judah, okay? And so they were given their first. And if you remember Caleb, do you remember Caleb? We had talked about Caleb. Remember whenever the 12 spies, when they sent them, the 12 spies, remember Caleb and Joshua were the only two telling the people to go into the land? Well, Caleb's still alive. So Joshua's alive. Caleb is still alive as well. And so Caleb is from the tribe of Judah. So his tribe was able to get their piece of land first, okay? And Joshua had, he was an old man too. I mean, not Joshua, Caleb was an older guy, man, just like Joshua was older as well, okay? And so Joshua, he tells, Caleb tells Joshua, he says, I was 40 years old when Moses sent me out to spy out the land. So Caleb had already seen the land years before. Remember when he went, they went to spy out the land. So Caleb knew what the land looked like, what it was. He had already knew all of that because Caleb had saw the land before. Y'all remember when they sent the 12 spies, right? Y'all know which lesson we talked about? This is a couple of weeks ago, but yeah. So Caleb had already saw the land. And so he knew, he said, God promised me that I would be able to get to come inside of the land. And so he, he said, Joshua, could I have, he wanted a certain part of the land. <clears throat> he says, can I have the mountain? He wanted to be in the mountains, basically. He says, give me the mountain. Now, the problem with that, which would sound kind of strange, is that that's the part of land the giants lived in. Now, they had the people that were called, they were the people of Anak, that was what they were called, but they were the giants. They were like seven, eight feet tall. They were really, really tall people, and they lived in those mountains, and that's the part of the land that Caleb wants. Now, remember, what do they have to do to the people living in the land before they go and take their land? Remove them from the land, right? So that means Caleb will have to remove the giants out of the land. So that's pretty, that's pretty bold of Joshua, right, to choose that part of the land knowing that's where, I mean, Caleb, I'm saying Joshua, knowing that's where the giants lived. But he says, the Lord is with me. So I will take the giants out of the land. And guess what? When Caleb, I mean, Caleb and the tribe of Judah went to take their land, guess what? They defeated the giants and removed them out of the land. So that's where Caleb wanted to go. And that's the part of the land he took. And yeah, so that was really bold of him to, you know, 
take that part of the land with the giants, right? Remember, like most people are, you know, not that tall. I don't know if, you know, y'all know anybody that's seven, eight feet tall. That's really, really tall. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the giant, so Caleb chose that part of the land. So he's the only one that, um, you know, we'll talk about that chose a specific part of the land, but all the other tribes had the different parts of the land that they went to, uh, that they went and possessed as their own. Now, some of the tribes removed people out of the land. Some of the tribes did not. They started to live in the land with the other nations. And that's not what the Lord told them to do, right? The Lord told them to remove those people from their part of the land first, and then they will possess their land. But some nations did not listen. They did not follow God's instructions. Instead, they decided they were going to live in the land with the nation. They were like, oh, well, they're not doing us anything. They're not doing us no wrong. Let's just all live together in the land. And that's not what the Lord wanted them to do and we'll see and we'll get to that uh when we get to judges but we'll see how whenever the other nations who did not remove i mean the tribes that did not remove the other nations out of their land they allowed those nations false gods to become their god so they started to do a lot of the wicked things that those nations were doing they started to do those things too knowing that's not what their god wanted so that's why God wanted the, them to remove the nations because he knows his people and he knows what they would do, right? They've done it already before. When God appeared to them at the mountain, what was the next thing they made? The, the golden calf. calf, right? So the Lord, no, that's why he wanted them to remove those nations because all those nations were worshiping false gods. But like I said, some tribes did not. They lived in the land with some of those other nations. Some of the tribes did do their part, like the tribe of Judah, Caleb's tribe, where they did remove the other nations from their land, but some did not. And they chose to live in the land with, and, we'll, and when we get to judges, we'll see what that's going to cause for them when they're turning away from God, following other false gods, doing all the wicked things that all these other nations are doing. So that's why if they would have listened to the Lord, maybe just maybe it wouldn't have been like that. But because they didn't obey God and they allowed these other nations to come in, to stay in, I guess you could say, this is what it led to. So we'll get to that when we get to uh, Judges on tomorrow, when we start Judges. So um, Joshua decides, you know, the Lord tells him that he's getting too old to try to fight everyone all the time and lead the people to fight. So they put, they divide the land and all the tribes are responsible for their part. So after time, Joshua is now 110 years old and he can no longer lead the people. This is it. His life is coming to an end. He's, you know, that's that's a pretty long life. 110 years old, that's, that's a long life. And so Joshua was able to live that long and he knew that he would soon die. Joshua knew that his life was coming to an end just like uh, Moses knew whenever it was his time. So Joshua sent messengers throughout the land, calling all the people and their leaders to meet him in a city called Shechem. That's where he wanted to meet with all the people. And he would give them a farewell message because he knew that his time, you know, he would die soon. And he wanted to remind the people of their God and what God expected from them before he would go. So all the people listen and they come to hear Joshua give them his last words. So Joshua tells the people and he reminds them of all that God had done from them from the beginning with Abraham, right? When he called Abraham out of Ur and brought him to this land that they are now in, he says, remember, God originally promised this land to Abraham. And we see years later, did God keep his promise? Yes, he did, because we are all descendants of Abraham. We all come from Abraham, then Isaac, his son, was born, then Jacob, and from Jacob came his 12 sons, then from the 12 sons of Jacob came the 12 tribes, and look where we are today. So he says, we see that God kept his promise, and look at this, all of the stories that we hear, we see it today, so it was true. Not just that, but yes, we went through the slavery in Egypt, but the Lord delivered us. He split the Red Sea for us. He led our people through the wilderness. You know, they, they had to go in the wilderness for 40 years. He says, but God promised that the next generation would see the promised land. And here we are now in the promised land. He says, because of God, God's blessing and his promise and his mercy, he says, we have this land now. It's ours. We have the land that we've been waiting for for so long that was promised to Abraham. It is now ours. He says, so this is what you never you need to do. Be courageous. 
He says, and do all that God has written in his law for you. Follow all of God's instructions. Do not turn away from God's word, all his commandments, his instructions that he's given to you, all the things that God wants you to do. Do not forget them at all. He says, if you turn away from God and worship false gods, you already know God will have to punish you for that. He says, so stay where you need to stay, which is with the Lord. And so he reminded them, he says, make sure you don't do what these wicked nations are doing. You don't follow their ways. You don't do the things that they are doing. Follow your God and stay close to your God. He commands them to do this. He commands them to follow the Lord and to stay close to God. And so the people listen to Joshua and they say, okay, you know, they listen to Joshua's final words that he gives them. And so they knew that this was the Lord speaking to them. Okay. And so Joshua said, listen, you're given free will. You do what you want to do. He says, but for me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what you should declare for your family that you will serve the Lord. So I'm not sure if you heard that scripture before. As for me and my house, that comes from Joshua. Yeah. So yeah, as for he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so he tells him, you need to do the same with your house, serve the Lord. But everybody has their choice. But he's telling them what God expects from them. And what God wants them to do. So the choice is ultimately theirs. And tomorrow when we get into Judges, we'll see what they chose to do. Okay? Joshua knew the people. He knew how they would always forget so fast what the Lord said. So he wrote it in a book in God's law, which that's where we get the book of Joshua from. He wrote his own book. <laughs> yeah. So he wrote his own book to remind them. So they already had the first five books from Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And now they have the next book, Joshua, okay? And so Joshua is challenging the people to stay close to the Lord and follow the Lord. And so after Joshua speaks to the people, not long after this, he ends up dying. And so that was like Israel's last leader um, in that moment. So the thing is, if you realize when Joshua died, did he tell them who would be next? No. no. When Moses died, Moses told them Joshua will be next, but Joshua dies. And there's no instructions for the people on who to follow next. Who is their leader next? Who's going to show them what to do next? Because they've had Moses. They've had Aaron too, kind of, you know, with Moses. And then they had Joshua. And now it's like, we don't have a leader. What do we do? And so Joshua is gone. Joshua has died. You know, I mean, he had to go, but there were no instructions on who to follow next. And so that's where judges comes into play. That's what we'll get into judges um, on tomorrow. So the people, you know, they all have their own piece of their land now. All, the, all, all of them are responsible for their own land. And Joshua gives them their final instructions, serve the Lord, follow the Lord, obey the Lord. But it's ultimately up to them on what they want to do. And now they don't have a leader. They don't have someone that can constantly say, hey, serve the Lord. They don't have someone that's going to go to God all the time and pray for them, right? Joshua's gone. So now it's up to the people. Now it's their time, their turn to stand up and be, you know, who they need to be in the Lord, okay? So yeah, so Joshua's gone. This is the end of Joshua's life. So Joshua had a successful uh, leadership over Israel, right? He gave them, they had a lot of victories. They've conquered the land like the Lord wanted them to. And it was, you know, they had a great leader in Joshua and it was all the Lord who did it through Joshua. Um, but we see how, you know, Joshua's purpose was to lead them into the land. And he did exactly that. He lived a life of purpose and everybody has their thing that they're going to do. And so Moses did his part. And when it was done, he was gone and Joshua did his part. And now he's gone. OK, so tomorrow. We'll go into Judges, like I keep saying, we'll go into Judges on tomorrow, kind of talking about what happens next for the people after, um, after they've possessed the land. Now, what do they do? That's what we'll get into on tomorrow. Amen?
All right. Awesome. So we finished the life of Joshua. So it wasn't as long as Moses's lessons were, um, but, you know, you know, it was good. So, yeah. So we'll go into the next part. We'll start that on tomorrow. All right. All right, guys. So that's Bible on today. I hope y'all have a good day. I'll see everyone later on today. Y'all bye bye.